I wanted to uh, welcome you, Angela and Jill and Robin. Thank you so much for uh, for participating tonight and for presenting for us. Uh, I want to welcome Robin Brewer, and Robin is here to present for us uh, on Photoshop and AI. Uh, Robin is uh, the art educator and department di liaison, and mm -hmm. you are at uh, is it Garnet Valley? Yes. Yeah, Garnet Valley School District. So you're at the high school there. Is there a specific name for that high school? It's just Garnet Valley High School. Gotcha. And so um, Robin has served as president of uh, P Pennsylvania Art Education Association and and also is, uh, we are very proud to say she is the uh, NAEA Secondary Division Director elect. And so when's your term begin, Robin? Um, At the end of next convention. All right. So that's yeah. going to be at the end of, uh, that's in April, correct? That's coming up. In I think April. It, uh, yeah, I think it is in April next year. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah. thank you so much for joining us and uh, take okay. it away. All right. Um, hello. Hello. Let me um, just make this nice and big. That should be good. So um, if anybody knows anything about AI, uh, maybe you'll get my little uh, picture there that, <laughs> um, yeah, right. Um, so I'm not going to profess to be uh, all knowing in AI in Adobe Photoshop. This is the first year I've ever used it, but um, I kind of dig it. So I thought it'd be fun to talk about. And I know a lot of people just would like to get their feet wet. So this might be a good way to get started. And let's see here. Okay. So I thought I'd, thought I'd start with something else funny here. Um and give you a chance to introduce yourself. If you could um, put in the chat a little bit about you, maybe your experience in Photoshop, because I might go a little fast in Photoshop if I think everybody is well versed in that, um, or if you've done any AI either with text or image generation. Um, so I put myself on here that um, I'm fairly proficient in Photoshop with an irrational fear of mask layers. I don't know why. I just they stress me out and I do anything I can to work around them. It's bizarre. Um, and I, I consider myself an emerging AI enthusiast. So, um, you know, I did, um, I put, I did my portrait and then I uh, played around with, um, I tried steampunk uh, pilot. Uh, I said glasses and that didn't work, but goggles worked better. Um, so there's my goggles. And then I did a brown leather bomber jacket. That one turned out pretty good. Um, and then over here, I tried to add like a pilot, like a leather pilot cap, and, and that wouldn't work at all. In fact, one of them was like a headband and with a big bald head sticking out of the top. It was, I might even still have it in the in the in the thing I might show you later. It was ridiculous. So um I just thought I'd play around there. And um, so let me take a look, see if I can get it to pop up um chat so yeah rob you're proficient afraid of ai okay no problem um okay all right good so we're all kind of at the same level there um so let's move along here and i actually have a four minute video to watch but um this is the one that really changed it for me about a year ago um and i thought I went back and I found it. It's a 13 minute video, but we're only gonna watch the four minutes that count. Um, so I isolated that part and we're just gonna watch that little bit here. Um, so For an image we'll generator to be able to respond to so many different prompts, it needs a massive diverse training data. Like hundreds of millions of images scraped from the internet along with their text descriptions. Those captions come from things like the alt text that website owners upload with their images for accessibility and for search engines. So that's how engineers get these giant data sets. But then what do the models actually do with them? We might assume that when we give them a text prompt, like a banana inside a snow globe from 1960, they search through the training data to find related images and then copy over some of those pixels. But that's not what's happening. The new generated image doesn't come from the training data. It comes from the latent space of the deep learning model. That'll make sense in a minute. First, let's look at how the model learns. If I gave you these images and told you to match them to these captions, you'd have no problem. But what about now? 
This is what images look like to a machine, just pixel values for red, green, and blue. You just have to make a guess, and that's what the computer does too, at first. But then you could go through thousands of rounds of this and never figure out how to get better at it. Whereas a computer can eventually figure out a method that works. That's what deep learning does. In order to understand that this arrangement of pixels is a banana and this arrangement of pixels is a balloon, it looks for metrics that help separate these images in mathematical space. So how about color? If we measure the amount of yellow in the image, that would put the banana over here and the balloon over here in this one-dimensional space. But then what if we run into this? Now our yellowness metric isn't very good at separating bananas from balloons. We need a different variable. So let's add an axis for roundness. Now we've got a two-dimensional space with the round balloons up here and the banana down here. But if we look at more data, we may come across a banana that's pretty round and a balloon that isn't. So maybe there's some way to measure shininess. Balloons usually have a shiny spot. Now we have a three-dimensional space. And ideally, when we get a new image, we can measure those three variables and see whether it falls in the banana region or the balloon region of the space. But what if we want our model to recognize not just bananas and balloons, but all these other things? Yellowness, roundness, and shininess don't capture what's distinct about these objects. We need better variables, and we need a lot more of them. That's what deep learning algorithms do as they go through all the training data. They find variables that help improve their performance on the task, and in the process, they build out a mathematical space with way more than three dimensions. We are incapable of picturing multidimensional space, but Midjourney's model offered this, and I like it. So we'll say this represents the latent space of the model, and it has more than 500 dimensions. Those 500 pixies represent variables that humans wouldn't even recognize or have names for, but the result is that the space has meaningful clusters. A region that captures the essence of banananess, a region that represents the textures and colors of photos from the 1960s, an area for snow and an area for globes and snow globes somewhere in between. Any point in this space can be thought of as the recipe for a possible image, and the text prompt is what navigates us to that location. But then there's one more step, translating a point in that mathematical space into an actual image in pixel space involves a generative process called diffusion. It starts with just noise and then over a series of iterations arranges pixels into a composition that makes sense to humans. Because of some randomness in the process, it will never return exactly the same image for the same prompt. And if you enter the prompt into a different model designed by different people and trained on different data, you'll get a different result because you're in a different latent space. Okay, so the part that really blew my mind was at the beginning when it says, oh, it just takes a snow globe and it takes a banana and it finds them on the internet and it sticks them together. But really it's a lot more than that. And it has a lot more to do with numbers than pictures, if that makes any sense. And so it's re it's like going out and searching for things but it's not not in the way that we originally thought at least at least for me right <laughs> so i don't know if that made it more confusing or less but i thought that that um really made me more interested in finding out you know how this works um etc so all right, Oops, here we go. Okay, next slide, here we are. Um, so really today I'm gonna talk about two features um, and these are the ones that are powered by Firefly. Has anybody used Firefly before? Good, okay. So Adobe made Firefly to um, kind of start their journey into AI uh, image generation. And um, and then now it is able to use that and plug that in and be the thing that makes AI work in Photoshop or Illustrator or whatever. So um, so these two features specifically are the newer ones that are coming out of Firefly. So we're gonna I'm gonna show you some examples with generative expand and also generative fill. And so expanding is simply um, adding more space to a photo and it just fills it in with what it thinks naturally would come to the sides or the top or the bottom or whatever. And then generative fill is being a little more specific where you're telling it, you're using text to tell it what to put in that space. That's, I guess, the main difference between those two. I 
Maria. Okay. Um, I think I didn't go all the way out to bring this out, but it's okay. We're good. Um, so here's just an example. And I'm going to go into Photoshop in just a second um, of what I mean by this, by generative expand, my original photo up top. Um, and then I stretched out the crop tool. And then this is just what it came up with. And then the next one is generative fill. So in this photo, the one on the left is um, the original. And then I tried a couple different, oops, a couple different things. And this one is, um, I asked it to add a colorful bird. And I basically drew a circle here and said, draw the bird there, right? Make a bird, put a bird right there. And then um, I wanted to make the fruits look uh, more ripe. So I said, ripe pomegranate. And then it replaced it with the ripe ones. Although I wasn't too happy with how small they were. And I haven't figured out how to do that because I'll show you when I go in there, you can't just change the size of it, which I'm sure that's something that Photoshop has got to be working on because it's it's quite annoying. All right, so here we are in Photoshop. You can all still see that, right? Uh, I think because I'm showing my whole screen. Um, and so um, let me make this a little smaller here. All right, um, so yeah, if I just go into crop and uh, let me go back, I'm like right here. This little window here, if you haven't noticed yet um, in Photoshop, this is your AI image generator like toolbar. And um, so it generally will pop up now. And um, this is where you're going to like type in what you want it to do. However, like for um, the generative expand, if I just go to crop, I can I can go in this direction and um, maybe I want to have a little more sky too. And then I can just hit generate. And anytime you do um, any in, any of the AI tools, it's always going to give you three options to start with. But that doesn't mean you only get three. You can just keep hit, hitting generate and it'll just keep generating different versions until you pick one that you like. So um, move this over a little bit. Uh, this not too bad. Okay, and then uh, I've got this one. I kind of like, so it's taking this texture of this mountain somehow and it's figuring out to make more of that. So if we go back and think about all those numbers, it's like, here's a cluster of these numbers and they're doing this. So let's add more of it over here. I don't know, it's just crazy. Um, I don't know what happened to my third one. It just disappeared. Okay, all right, well, let's hit generate one more time. So again, I give it a sec here. And you can see it made some sort of uh, layer here when it did that. You can always just throw that layer away and start over if you don't like it. Taking this good old time. Okay, this one uh, a little deeper here on this. Ooh, look at these little clouds back here. That's nice. <laughs> Okay, so there you go. Um, and like I said, if I don't like any of this, I um, can just uh, drag this down to trash. And looks like I might have to go backwards a little bit. Let's go back here in my history and I'm back to where I was and I can start over, okay? So generative to expand, pretty simple concept. Stretch out your, your crop tool, hit generate, and it's gonna do that. If you want, for example, then the sky to do something different, you're going to do more of a generative fill kind of thing. And that's where you're going to use your text to image. I went ahead and left this one um, in like where I was playing around with it. So, uh, for example, in my history, you can kind of see um, some of the things that I did here. But also, let's see if I can make this a little bigger, my layers window. Yeah, there we go. So um, I've got... I did each of these separately. So that was an expand. Let's see, there you go. So that one, that's the original. And then this is what it replaced it with. Um, but look what happens if I do like, um, if I just do like a, no, I'm not gonna get it on that layer. There we go. So if I get this where I can try to make it bigger, if I do that, look at what happens, right? It, it just totally um, takes that piece that it had 
and it just expands the whole thing. So now it doesn't match up anymore, right? Um, so to get it larger, I guess I need to play around a little more and maybe make my selection bigger or maybe type large pomegranate or something. Actually, where I stopped, it really doesn't look that bad. It's kind of blending in here a little bit. But if I wanted to make it smaller, and then yeah, it would be a problem for sure there too, because it's just, uh, it kind of kept the whole thing together. So sometimes you'll find this will happen, or sometimes you move it and then there's like a hole there. Like you just see like the, the black or the gray and white little boxes, the transparency pattern behind it. So sometimes it also will just move a hole into the picture. So, um, um, so if we, let me go to the next, um, the next tab here. Any questions? Am I going too fast? You guys all good? I got a thumbs up there. Okay. Um, so I just call this text to image. And um, this project, I had my students, um, actually, they haven't done this one before. I'm thinking about trying it next year, but they did do one where they use their own um, photo and then they basically just add things to it. Um, this one I created completely from nothing. None of these images are real. Um, and so I'm going to show you what that is made of. And so um, I started with a blank document. So that's my background. Let me just take everything away. Okay. So I started with a blank background. And then I selected the bottom half. Um, oh, where'd that oh like through the bottom half. And I just used the selection tool, like this tool right here. And I selected the bottom half like this, right? And then I typed in what I wanted. And you can see what it is that I wanted. I wanted a sulfuric landscape, and this is what it gave me. Then I selected the same way using the selection tools. I'm just gonna get rid of that. Um, I selected the top half and I said, severe weather sky. That's what I put into here right? So if I turn that on, you can see now that the sky came in, right? Um, then I put in chupacabra because I think it's a funny word. And um, there were several really cute ones to pick from. This one I thought looked the most like a chupacabra, if <laughs> there was ever one. <laughs> and um, I tried different towers this one was not a success and you can see I kind of moved it, right? See how it's a rectangle? That's because it was right here in the middle and I didn't like it. So I moved it, but then I just I just made one on top of it. Um, so it's still there, but I just made this one big enough that it covered the other one. Um, and this time I did a futuristic tower and then I added this little rusty robot, okay? so. You can, if you look in this space here, what it looks like, and then I had a rusty robot and it, it just kind of puts this weird thing in. I'm going to zoom in. This is so small. Some strange rusty thing, <laughs> but it, you know, it figures out the space around it as well, makes it fit in. So I thought it'd be fun real quick for us to, to make one. Let's make one together. Um, so I'm going to ask you, so I don't have to keep looking at the chat to just um, yell stuff out, just That's unmute awesome. and give me something to do. So let's, I'm just going into new and creating just a blank document. All right. And so shall we do, let's do, um, let's just do uh, something similar. All right, so let's, what do we want the ground to be? Let's search. Any ideas? Swamp. <laughs> swamp, I love it. <laughs> do we wanna say anything about the swamp? Do we wanna give it more detail? Cause sometimes if, you, if you've done like text, mm. AI, like the more precise you are. Uh, misty swamp. Ooh, okay, all right. Um, and sometimes I just, I what you see what you get and then you can you can <laughs> add you can change the text and generate again. So let's get our misty swamp and then we'll pick which one we like. Do, do, oh, okay. 
So that's our first option. Uh, second option, I kind of like that. What do you think? <laughs> Got these weird little, weird little, <laughs> weird little trees, <laughs> weird little tree plants, whatever they are. All right, which one? One, two, or three? This is two, one. I don't know either. Somebody else can pick. I picked the swamp. Somebody else can pick which swamp. All right. I like. I the pick two. Tree. Two. Okay. okay. Two. Two, two. Yeah, I like two too. Okay. <laughs> two, two. So um let's do something up in the on the sky here. Let's make something fly, like a flying creature. Okay, so let's so we don't need to have any other oh first we need a background. I see what's it saying. It could just look like this and be really misty looking because it kind of blended in, right? Like when it's really dense fog. Yeah, it just looks foggy to me. So yeah, let's go straight to putting something in there flying. Okay. Okay, so um, I'll just put in kind of over About here. flying reptile creature. <laughs> you know, we're going to have to do a swamp monster too. Oh yeah. No swamp can be without a swamp monster. Right. So you just use the regular, yeah, just the regular marquee tool. Yes. Yes. You can use any selection tool like the lasso if you want to make it more yeah. like, a, yeah. This so, is weird. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We got that. Uh, who even knows what's going on there? Let me zoom in. It looks like a lizard. That's kind of. With no eyes. <laughs> Come on. I love when it's just like, what? <laughs> this is not normal. This is not normal. Those numbers are not lining up right. <laughs> I okay. So we can hit generate again, or we can pick one of these guys. I, I, They're all going to be equally weird. I am curious to see what it, like gen, generate just going to give us three new ones, correct? Yeah, yeah. So, but so we see. still have the other three. Yep. So there's right. those three, and now it's making three more. I teach a ninth grade class that is going to love. Yeah. This. I, I was thinking this like thing. tomorrow. I can see how high school kids would really enjoy this. Middle school also. Middle school and high school kids would love this. Yeah. Just to play around and have fun. Yeah. I'm right. I'm ready to begin a new unit tomorrow. I could on aperture and I could just <laughs> like stick it right in. All right. So these are our six. Ooh. It's really struggling. <laughs> That first one was the best. I think the first one was the best one. Yeah, I think I like it. I like this weird fin what do you think, thing Angela? and the the weird little finger things. <laughs> yeah, the let's just go with the first one. All right, all right. So we've got That's that. Yeah, I think our swamp monsters are going to be probably equally weird, but um, so let's use a lasso tool then and just kind of kind of make because it'll it'll make a monster fit in that space, right? Um, so if we wanted like a tall, skinny monster, like maybe we would draw it uh, like a, like a tall, skinny bit. So this is maybe more of a blob, I guess. So swamp monster. All right. And then I think we need to do a person because the people are not okay. They're not okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you think these are weird? Okay, so that's kind of creepy. That's kind of cool how I put it right down in the fog. So it's kind of yeah, crazy. yeah, mask kind of scary. I'm a little scared. That's frightful. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm gonna have nightmares. Oh. <laughs> oh, this one I like. I like that. It kind of yeah. goes with the other one too. I think yeah, it's with the other one. They're both flying. Yeah. Okay, so let's real quick then stick a little person over here. Okay, so any ideas? How we Should he be it? afraid and cowering and doing all that or just hanging out and watching the show? Um, uh, we, so we could do, oh, what about like a bird photographer? Okay. This reminds right? me of the Land of the Lost. <laughs> Remember that old series? Yes. Land of the Lost. The okay. Let's see what we get. I think bird photographers should be pretty easy. Come on. You can do this. We'll see what we get, though. A birder. What? A birder. 
Wait, there's an, there's another it's one. Not a person. <laughs> Second choice. This one is. Oh. He's wrong. Wrong. He's actually <laughs> not bad. He's a little <laughs> out of scale. And he's pointing the wrong way. We don't know what's off in the distance coming, though. <laughs> I think oh, this that's, bird is really that's, fantastic. That's because though. we put in bird and photographer, two separate words, right? So yeah. what, if you, what if you put in something like um, uh, photographer taking photos of birds or something like I wonder how much different it would be. Yeah. Or yeah. Person, person taking photos. Okay. It's right out then. Okay. <clears throat> what we need is like a gen a Gen Z like boner. Mm. Taking a selfie. <laughs> ah, well, there exactly. you go. There you go. <laughs> Look at this. Look. And then wait. That space Look is at, a little Ew. Ew. on that face. Ew. I mean, that's just what I mean. People are not okay. Here. it's not well. it's not good with we already know it's not good with hands it's not always good with facial expressions here it's cheating it's like i'll just make it really foggy <laughs> <laughs> look at this look at this ear and that looks like a nose it's like a nose on the side of its head yeah so we're not there yet with things like people okay it's really great at uh, landscapes and things like that. Cars is pretty good. What about People known know and animals are a little tough. What about known animals? Like what lives in a swamp? Like um, something big besides a snake. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty good with snakes. I think I've seen kids do a bunch of snakes. Let's what do what about something like that one bird was good. Crocodiles and alligators and oh, there you go. There you go. I'm just curious to see how accurate known animals are. Hmm. I think usually they're not too bad. Okay. You know? Yeah. But you when you when you say monster, it's like, oh, it could be like anything just morphed together. Yeah. yeah. That's not too bad. Um okay. It's interesting how it's trying to kind of match the depth of field by the things closer. It's much more vibrant versus yeah. that's misty bird it's almost like it's a little too bright in the front though but yeah at least it's trying and now you could like put a layer mask on top of that and you mm -hmm. could blur that down if you wanted to right yeah, yeah. Like adjustment yeah. layer on top of that yeah because there are their own layers yeah every time you do one it makes a new layer hmm. yeah absolutely um okay so Hopefully that's not so scary. Make a selection and you type it in here. Um, and so let me go, I have one more thing to go to. And you know what? I forgot to put in the example. No, maybe it's in my other thing. Okay, I'm talking to myself. Um, <laughs> here's my headshot. I was gonna see, oh wait, here's, this is how many times I tried to find a good hat. And none of them were right. They're all like little headbands. Yeah. Uh, I thought I had more than that. But um, yeah, so this is just that that project there. Um, any questions while I'm still in Photoshop? Otherwise, I'm going to head back to the slideshow. Slide deck. Only, um, and I don't want to take away from the presentation, but I'm curious, mm -hmm. like as far as graphic design goes, mm -hmm. Things like that. Have you tried anything like that? Or poster design? I know that Photoshop isn't the go-to, like yeah. that's a guy, but um, that is that's Adobe Illustrator, is what I mean to say. Now we can't call it AI, I guess, because it's a, but yeah. but uh, but ha have you seen anybody try that, Robin? I'm just curious. I together there is if you've um if you're a Canva person, uh Canva has AI feature in it. Right. And um, I've played around in that and it's pretty bad. <laughs> like I'll put like a Shiba Inu, which is the kind of dog I have. And they're all like, they're crazy looking, they're, you know, so, um, but it does do some things good, like patterns or flowers or, you know, so, um, it, but in terms of graphic design, I've not quite played with it and I haven't played with it in Illustrator. 
Um, so I don't know really what's going on there. We have a different teacher that teaches illustrator and I'm not, I'm not very proficient in that at all. Right. Thank you. Um, yeah. Um, okay. So let's go back. Try to figure out where I'm supposed to go. There we go. Um, I want to, I want to go back to having this. All right, so I just want to talk about a couple lesson ideas that I've actually done. I've done two so far this year, and that's it. Um, but it's my first year, just dipping my toes in. Um, and then I have another one that I was just talking about. So it's, you know. Uh, but first of all, the beginning of year, with I have a film and animation class, and they do like some, you know, claymation and things like that. So we actually did this one in Firefly. Um, because I really hadn't tried it out in Photoshop yet, but these three I made in Photoshop just the other night, uh, just to kind of show we did, um, like this one, I did 3d form, cute alien, and I had them just use this as a way to brainstorm and say, like, if you want to do a cute puppy or like, what kind of character are you going to make? Type it in and hit generate and hit generate again and hit generate again and see all the different things that come up um to kind of help you come up with ideas right so just kind of using it a little bit for idea generation and then by the time they look at 12 of them they're gonna come up with one right and the idea is hopefully that they'll be just take it as inspiration and not just draw exactly this one you know they might have a combination like it might be this one but kind of like with these kind of eyes you know and and you know kind of pick and choose from all the different little versions they see. How is this different from just searching Google images? It's not very different, really, except for instead of using pictures that people have put on the internet and then you're just seeing them in Google images, it's reforming them out of, again, those numbers. It's like just taking like what it thinks it is and it's forming it. Right. So, um, you know, if somebody's like, well, you know, AI, isn't that kind of like cheating? Well, you've been looking at Google Images for years and years now. So to me, this is not any different. It's just that it's forming these images in a different way. Right. So that's one. Um, this one, um, this is a couple of my students and they and this is another one. If you can see it, this guy's face is super creepy. And this cop's face is, or is a little weird too. Um, but, and I think his hands are little stubbies too. Uh, they start with their own picture. This was one that was him as a little kid. And um, he added like a crown and added some people in there. Um, and then this student, you can see he's at like Niagara Falls, added this little tutu. And I don't know if I can zoom in very well, but maybe I, if I come out, I can do it. But um added the fish okay so let me go in here just so we can try to zoom in this way no i can't let's try to get it a little bigger there we go that's better like look at look at his hands now like what's going on here right um so <laughs> but you know and then you know add a little two two there a little that actually turned out pretty good i was impressed that that one came out all right because sometimes changing clothing makes it get a little weird too but um so this one they had a good time with and i thought that this was kind of fun because it's one of their own pictures they're not creating it from scratch um and they were able to kind of adjust it and you know do something fun with it and there's a little more connection because it's their own picture that they're starting with. Yeah, it was fun to try just to get their feet wet. And we we had already done um, a surreal type of assignment. So that just, if I go to the next slide, this one we just talked about. Um, they do a surrealism assignment where they're using, they're starting with their own image. They're adding things, um, but they're doing it manually. So sometimes they'll borrow something off of Google images, but I try to get them to use as much of their own thing. So if they're going to put a dog in, put their own dog in or grab a, you know, a cat, put their own cat in it. 
and come up with something surreal. I do let them like, if you want something on fire, I don't want you to go set something on fire and take a photo. Just take that off of Google and let's be safe. But, um, you know, the idea then is here to do what we, what I just talked about. What if you just created it out of nothing, out of numbers? Um, and, you know, just as a comparison, you know, how, how hard is it to get it to be what you want it to be and what you, you know, so like when I had them doing this assignment, they were a little surprised at how hard it was to get what they wanted. Right. If they put in swamp monster or like when we had that flying thing, none of, none of them were really what we wanted. Right. <laughs> They're just like, you know, you just get what you get. So um, I think that having them do this assignment and then um, going on and doing something like this, maybe they can understand that there's there's still effort into it and, you know, at least then have the knowledge of if I want to make something very specific, I need to probably go out and create it myself, take a picture of it myself, make it what I want it to be, because it's always going to just be what the computer's willing to give me, right? If they're doing AI, right? So um, I'm still working on that. I'm still working on the ideas and how, you know, how is it art, that kind of questioning and, and things like that. So um, for me right now, AI is an experience. It's for them to learn or to, um, how would, how should I say it? Um, I guess to, to be knowledgeable about and how to use it ethically and, and things like that. So I don't know, like I said, still working on it. Um, I'm going to be honest. I use chat GPT. I said, can you give me the pros and cons of, uh, using AI image generators? And so this is what it came up with, with pros. Um, number two is, of course, really disturbing for art educators. Um, you know, obviously it's fast, but cost effective. It's like uh, compared to hiring professionals, you know, it can be more cost effective. It's true. It's not, you know, I don't have to like it. It is the truth. Um, you know, they talk about versatility, accessibility, these things here, time saving, experimentation. I kind of like the experimentation part of it. Like we had a good time. The four of us, you know, putting that together and picking out stuff and everything and experimenting with ideas and such. Um, in terms of the cons, so here we are, lack of originality. Um, you know, it's it's original to the computer, but, um, you know, is it really, um, is it really your idea? That, that thing that we made, even though we came up with the different prompts, was it really our idea? Is it anybody's idea? You know, that kind of thing. Um, is it uh, infringing on anybody's copyright? From what I've read and understand, um, Adobe is using its own database of its own library of images. So you have Adobe stock images, Anything, any kind of imagery that um, Adobe has acquired through artists, um, um, you know, giving it to Adobe stock or whatever, however that works out, that's what it's using. It's not using the World Wide Web. It's not using the internet. It's not using Google. It's using its own little library of images, which is limiting, which is maybe why it doesn't do people well. You know, because it's still not, it, the database is not big enough. So then is it a copyright infringement if it's all people who have agreed for Adobe to use their imagery in in Adobe stocks, stock images, right? Um, the question would be, well, when they signed an agreement that Adobe could use their image, AI wasn't in that contract probably, you know, but now it's there. So, you know, that would be something to consider. But I think that Adobe is at least trying to 
um, go about it um, in a more controlled way instead of just um, opening it up to everything. And maybe that's just their capability. Maybe it's because, and I'm just speculating, that's all they can handle right now is <laughs> just their own library, right? Um, sorry, I was just thinking something else that I needed to uh, talk about, but I'm sure it'll come back around. Um, technical challenges, we saw some of that. So, you know, we're still early in this, even though AI has been doing a lot, you know, for quite a while now, um, in terms of image generation, we're, we're not 100% there, right? We saw that. Um, data bias. So um, if there's a, a lot of different image generators out there besides Firefly, it's going to be biased based on whatever that database, whatever it's pulling from, right? So maybe if it's pulling from the entire World Wide Web, maybe it's a little less biased. At least it's only as biased as the entire World Wide Web is, right? Um, but it's, yeah, like I said, it's going to be as biased as its data set is, right? In terms of, I don't know, diversity um, and things like that. Um, yeah. Um, security risks. So um, sometimes using different softwares. Um, and, and it's funny because we had an in-service today and our admin, our um, technology director, he actually talked about this today um, in terms of AI and, you know, using platforms where you have an account, you generally are at less of a risk than if you are using something that is kind of free, that it does, it could put you at risk at it using, um, you know, um, like using your information freely, however it wants, right? So, um, what was I gonna do here? I do have some links here and I think we put them in the chat and maybe they need to be put back in there, but um, I did put a link for Firefly. Um, this is the full video, the 13 minutes instead of the four minutes that we watched. Um, like I said, it was a really good one, but there's a couple of good ones out there, but this one um, I think was the easiest to follow along. And then this user guide, let me go back out here. And I had some, it sounds like it's the whole user guide. I don't think it is, but it just I just found this so helpful. It had everything I needed like right on this one page. So um, if you come down to, It just shows them right here. So Photoshop, Photoshop, da, 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 da. Um, I lost it. It's in here, I swear. I saw generative AI. There it is. There you go. Okay. Um, right. So here is, and it's talking about, because you can have, you know, Photoshop um, on the desktop is what they're kind of talking about. It's just your regular Photoshop. Um, you can have... Um, on the iPad, um, the, uh, their web version. So it's, you know, any of these. So if we go to generative fill, um, it's going to take you in there and um, they have these great little videos and um, kind of like just simple tutorial um, bits. So if you want to go back and you kind of forget some things, this is a really great spot for that. Uh, there's the link for um, Firefly. And when you get there, it can be confusing. Um, I don't believe you have to sign in um, because uh, they've been keeping it fairly open. So um, see, it says sign in. I went ahead and went there and I can go ahead and um, start generating. So the thing that I like to play around in here is uh, the text to image, of course. Um, it also has, um, other things where you can put a photo in and like recolor that says illustrator this little text effect is um now there i gotta sign in um is where you can do like i'm not gonna bother with it but you can go you can kind of see down here you can do like different texts like these like these balloon texts and things like that um so that's there and um, i think that is it 
Just wanted to point those little guys out. Okay. Um, I think that's all I've got. And you know what? It's already been 47 minutes, 45 minutes. Um, what other questions or ideas that you have? Has anybody um, done anything else with? Well, I just wanted to comment yeah. that I uh, say thank you, Robin. And and mm -hmm. I also have, I, I was totally afraid of even trying this because it just was like, it took so long to learn Photoshop. It just, it, you know, <laughs> and it was so confusing. And I have always switched between a, uh, Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. And then it's just like, there's so many differences between them. And mm -hmm. I thought that I had kind of learned it at this point. And now there's this whole nother ball of wax that I was like, even afraid to go near mostly because when I say I'm afraid I just I didn't want to learn a whole bunch of new stuff I felt like I already put in all that time you know that's how but, I felt too yeah, Absolutely. so this was a really great introduction and so thank you I'm, I'm I feel really comfortable with it. I think I could go into my classroom tomorrow and and tell students yeah. to do that generative yeah. one um, generative for one thank you awesome all right anything else not that was fun, but I can definitely see how middle school and high school kids will really enjoy that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Thank We've you. been playing around with some of the, the free ones online. We we're thinking about redoing the front of our house. And instead of sitting there like we used to do old school with the color pencils and the transparencies and playing around with different colors, it's nice to just like upload a picture of the front of your house and click a button and boop. Yeah. The front of your house. Like we were just been sitting there playing with these for like hours one night. <laughs> Mm -hmm. but yeah it's kind of cool how the ai can just kind of change things up yeah like put in a whole new like um you know architectural genre and it'll like completely redo it it's kind of fun <laughs> yeah. and you know what i knew it would come back around the thing that i wanted to talk about really quick was that um you know as of like two months ago i double checked again um that the AP um, art um, requirements, et cetera, uh, do not allow for any AI. So like um, any of our students who are going to take AP, like we know they're on that track or who are in AP, um, they are not allowed to use it for even, even just brainstorming idea generation. Um, they, they've, they're like absolutely no AI use in their work so um that was that's the only thing i would say is um you know just kind of keep an eye on that because i it'll probably change a little bit i don't know but for right now it's still like it i don't know how they can tell but they <laughs> you know they 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 know it's not allowed so if you have if you teach ap or if you are going to have some students that are going to take ap um, art, then I would just kind of, you know, they doesn't mean they can't use it in other work, but just in the work that they submit for their AP portfolio, there shouldn't be any AI used. Makes sense. Yeah. I think they just like, let's just say no all together until we figure this out. Yeah. So <laughs> sense. probably scaring them like, Ooh, mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much. Um, and uh, hopefully, like you said, got just enough to dive in there and not, not be hesitant. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah. Thank you very much, Robin. Really appreciate your presentation. Tonight. You bet.